What up, everybody? Today. Yes, yes, chickens. Yeah, <laughs> yes. <laughs> the two of us chickens. <laughs> what is what is that from? Uh, well, maybe maybe it's a Britishism. Like, who's there? Just us chickens. I don't know. Like, it's one of those things I took in as a child. Now I'm gonna have to Google it, unless Chad is gonna tell us like where that's from. But I get uh, Chad the, like, knows everything. Most, most random things because um, my mother's side is British, so. Oh, cool. So like, uh, like British, as in you still have family members over in England, and then uh, if well, you ever go visit, now, but oh, okay. I had um a bunch of great aunts and uncles, who are is there, British. and I guess uh, uh oh here okay, ain't nobody here but us chickens. Oh, come on, Wikipedia. I do want to support you, but not right now. Uh, is a jump blues song. Um, so, uh, it popularized the expression, but the phrase is older. First known appearance was a joke published in 1908, um, regarding chicken thief. Hmm. Interesting. So huh. I guess it's very American. So yeah, that means if you ever went over to England and went over to your haunted family manor and talked to the ghosts of your ancestors and you'd be like, hey, it's just us chickens, they would just stare at you blankly. <laughs> and then both of you would pause for like a couple of seconds and then you'd be like, wait, what the fuck? A ghost. <laughs> <laughs> so I want to go back to your family in England. Like, do you actually, do you have like a family manor? Do you have like a family crest? Do you have like heraldry? No, like, I mean, just because somebody's from, like, okay, so um, imagine in your mind, like, the, the British movies, and it's about a coal mining strike, right? Mm -hmm. It's in, like, the north of England, and nobody has ever heard of soap, apparently, so they're all, like, oh. covered in grime, and they all are, like, really, like, Rawr! and they speak in really, like, um, strong regional accents rather I'm, than the polished british accent i'm thinking of the full monty right now which is a great movie if you yes. haven't seen it yes yeah i don't know that i forget if any of them were um uh coal miners but they were definitely working class okay so take that in your head my grandfather could have gone down the pit line um so like that is the family that i have um he had uh brothers who did go into mining um, my grandmother was um, a miner's daughter who her father died in a mining accident, um, and then her mother later remarried. So I had a step grandfather um, who's now dead, but I met him at one point. Um, and so, like, <laughs> that's that family history. Yeah, <laughs> my oh, grandfather interesting. has this family story of how he didn't get along with his parents. His parents didn't treat him very well. Um, and so uh, he had to go to London to look for work from, you know, their small Yorkshire town because he wasn't going to go down the mine. Um, so his Nobody older wants to go brother down the mine. Um, said to him, you know, you're, go you're going off. Um, I'm sorry to see you go. Go in my coat pocket. There's a shilling there. And like, that'll help you out a little bit. And that was like the entirety of the goodbye he got from his family. Like his parents didn't see him off. Like it was just his older brother sort of like giving him a little bit of money that he couldn't really afford either. Um, and he just like set off to London to try to find work. So. Huh. Is that, do you think that that's just like uh, the family culture or do you think that that's sort of like the attitude of the times like how to toughen up your kids that are about to like go off on their own or like maybe there's some sort of idea that like oh this is like what masculinity is or something this is all you need to go off and make your own fortune no i think they were just they were dirt poor and there was i think how many how many siblings did my grandfather had like there were like six or seven of them oh my goodness and... that's a lot of kids yeah yeah well i mean and that was the product of the time um but like i don't know like, because you know there's there's a lot about sort of like oh you know uh, you didn't you know stiff upper lip and didn't love their kids and blah, blah, blah. um but 
like I think some people they did they did care for their kids and some people didn't and when you have no birth control you don't get to choose whether you have kids or not so if you're not the kind of person who really loves kids then too bad <laughs> you mm -hmm. got them anyway yep. yep 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 so i i don't i don't think it was any kind of like sort of um mis misapplied sort of like build their character or anything like that i think they just they they were dirt poor and they couldn't care and like they didn't make an effort because they were the kind of people they were and i can't really blame them but right right yeah it's not like here's a week old pie, pie crust with some money inside and clothes and like half a cooked chicken you'll you'll make it kid <laughs> so so rhiannon yes uh, unless you have another topic of the day i actually no? really want to pick your brain about okay. like uh, your D D journey because yeah. i think of like all the people um that have been members of like the, the original crew Mm -hmm. uh i think you were one of the ones who had um uh a very strong opinion or, or maybe just like a preference of like how to play D, D in the beginning uh that wasn't exactly like how we were playing on stream and so like i was wondering like if that sort of like changed over time and how you feel about things like uh like combat or like uh you know character peril you know throughout like the different arcs oh, and oh the okay. campaigns that we've like, had wait what were my preferences? <laughs> I mean, it was many years ago. <laughs> but I feel like, you know, we haven't actually sat down and, like, chatted about this. Um, and when we actually started playing, that was my first time actually, uh, like, really digging into, like, a 5e campaign. Mm -hmm. Like, this is the longest running 5e campaign I've been a part of. And so I've definitely, like, changed some of my opinions or developed some new opinions, like, over the course of this journey. So I'm just curious, like, you know, what you picked up and, um, yeah, what some of your changes are. Because, <laughs> well, you phrased that about like a good interviewer. Because I was like, "Have I, have I changed?" And I'm like, "No," but I I think I have. Um, well, uh, I, I mean, think so, you have. Okay. <laughs> well, so to a certain degree, I feel like I got less shit at combat, but I got less shit at like sorcerer combat. Um, but. I've also been playing D and D long enough to see like various other players and how they like how you can find your sweet spot for a character type, but you don't have to be limited by it. But you don't have to be like diametrically opposed in every single one. Like I know some people like do like you know they want to play the half orc barbarian and then they want to play the next time the halfling bard and then they want it you know that kind of thing um but which is not me but um i mean i think sort of i am less embarrassed about being like yeah i want to see the variety that's possible with sorcerer um and i like sorcerers um yeah fuck wizards man <laughs> <laughs> yeah well, uh, jeremy crawford does not agree with you but you know that's okay <laughs> I love oh, sorcerers I, I have myself. I have chat open, so. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, yeah, basically. Oh, no, I meant Jeremy Crawford, like the designer, oh, one oh, of the designers okay. of D&D. &D, I, I just but, heard a name. I thought somebody was in the chat. Uh, no, but uh, yeah. So I feel like, um, you know, you came into it like very much so um, wanting more of like a, like a role play heavy, like intrigue heavy uh a day in the sli uh, a day in the life of slice of life you know type of game um and i think like over time like i've seen you like really embrace like the spell list and sort of like what the spell list can do uh to to allow you to live the fantasies that you have for your character and like how you can grow her as you level her and get access to new spells and like what's a huge difference between me and you is that and and I and I really admire this about you is that you are like absolutely delighted by getting a spell and like <laughs> casting the spell like you have really made like lightning chain lightning like levitation you know all those things uh, uh like really like yours and like mm -hmm. you go back to them and like you just love I can tell you just love using them every time <laughs> yeah 
Yeah. Well, and, and I think that's like, it's part of being, that's why I like the sorcery is that you, the, the spell choices are informing my role playing and my character. And so I do want to be limited. I want to like pick the best three that are then informing my character rather than having the whole, you know, withered spell book. Um, right. And like, um, it actually came up in like private discord conversation on the Isekai game um, that we're doing where right now my character who is me um, just has like two spells. Um, and like um, we were talking about, what do you want for book two? And I'm like, one, cantrips, two, cantrips, three, cantrips. <laughs> yeah, prestigitation? <laughs> well, it's, it's not even like that I want a specific one, but I think for me, spells, for all that, like, when I look at my spell list for Artemisia, it's very damage heavy. Mm -hmm. Like, especially when we were looking at, like, you know, Rogar the cleric or whatever, and he was sort of looking at what damage does he have versus other things. Um, and I'm like, well, I don't, I'm not focused on damage, but I did end up with damagey spells um but uh the thing i like best about spells is um not just like with them um sort of thinking about the and and you do it a lot with your spells and the sort of like improvised weapons and like what can you do to sort of like look at this spell sideways and then do something interesting with it as opposed to just like pointing it straight forward and doing exactly what the flavor text says it does yeah um and like you're great at that and i oh, thank i you. like <laughs> i like the sort of looking at the world in terms of and i like escape rooms like a ton as you know um mm -hmm. looking at the world in terms of not just shoot a thing but uh set off a chain reaction or do something over there so that somebody runs over here like that kind of thinking about it in a wider way as opposed to the sort of like with a gun it would be spray and pray right um. right 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 <laughs> uh but i feel like you picked the perfect class for that like sorcerers with like their meta magic you know you get a lot of uh you can manipulate the spell itself and tweak it mm -hmm. in different ways in order to uh play around with the parameters and adapt it to the situation and the need that you have like you pick the class um in some ways you know you're taking like a few tools that you have simplifying the spell book and taking those and like having set different options to allow you to um make it work for like whatever situation that you need it to rather than having like 20 spells that cover the gamut of all the different possible you know options so and I feel like, you know, you've never been, I've never seen you like frustrated by like, you know, <laughs> a, a lack of spell options or something like you're just, you're so excited to use, uh, you know, the, the, the levitate or the lightning. And I love it. You know, I think it's great. Like you give me joy, you know, every time you, you, you're you excited to use it. I'm like, yes. <laughs> well, they're, they're so cool. And like, um, you know, I, even in the, I did 3.5. I forget how high level we got. I think we started at one and we got up to like, I don't know, six or seven. So nothing like crazy. Um, but uh, uh, getting like really high level, um, that was sort of something I'd never explored sort of the offerings before. And so that it was each time I leveled up, I didn't tend to sort of like look ahead too much. So I'd look at like the newest spells and I was just like, oh, realms of possibilities. Mm -hmm. I love it. Um, so I do, I do. And, and I will admit now that like, um, less the sort of like hordes of, I don't know, zombies or something coming for us, but, um, the, the combats where there's, um, terrain and different kinds of enemies that you're sort of picking and choosing which ones you're focusing on and like that sort of stuff, um, when I DM, I still can't DM that, but I'm beginning to appreciate it as a player. Wow. You appreciate <laughs> battle maps? <laughs> well. Is that what you're trying yes. to tell me? Oh, hey. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to share this with Steven. Steven is going <laughs> to love this. Because Steven is like, he is the member of our group who like loves maps the most. 
I think uh, many of us who DM, uh, we spend extra time and attention to our battle maps when Steven is a player because he absolutely delights in just poking around and looking at everything and having a map like in front of him. Yeah, I will. I will admit, like they're a little lost on me sometimes, where it's like it's a big manor, and right. I'm like, eh, it's a big manor. I don't need to know if the library. A big manor. Whatever do you mean? <laughs> when did you explore a big manor battle map? Hmm. Not uh, well. I mean, thinking in general, because in that case, like, an a lot of effort went into the, went into it, and I super appreciate mm. that. But um, yeah, the, it's in the, this episode. The Briar Spoilers. House, yeah. The Briar House maps are like um, really detailed and awesome. And when I first started started thinking about Briar House, I was very much just sort of like, I know whatever's in there. And of course now, like whatever is in there. Yeah, 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 <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. The time. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think what's uh, also an interesting thing is like as we've played these characters and uh, this these campaigns like over the years, I feel like it's like so real to me like more and more and more so like as we do different like alternate universes like different one shots or something like it's so easy to me to like figure out like the familiar and like what carries through and like i love seeing like the the well i guess i love seeing the familiar and how they adapt to like sure. the the one shots or the au's and like i hope we do more of that like in the future yeah, yeah. That's definitely, like, I think that's something I'm familiar with from my MUD days, um, which is the the character with a duration of, like, years. Um, mm -hmm. And so you can really know them inside and out, and then you start throwing them into, like, really different situations and just filling it out with them, as opposed to um, some of my early d and I didn't have a long tenure with any particular character, so you're starting again at zero, as far as the character's interlocking history mm -hmm. with what's been on screen and with the other players. Um, and so it, not that the characters are flat, but you're sort of starting at the base level for deepening them like over and over again. Um, so I definitely was like, as we got into the year's tenure with this set of characters, I'm like, yeah. Yeah, that's the good stuff. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I mean, it'll be really interesting to see, you know, like clearly we had uh, a big finale in Westgate, mm -hmm. but, you know, clearly we're playing like more games that contain the stories of these characters. And so like, we don't, you know, also spoiler alert, like we don't have like an ending ending in mind. Mm -hmm. um, we just, we're just, taking the games and the stories as they go and like figuring out like what else can we do with them and like all of us ha seem to have some sort of exciting idea of like what sort of game to run for these characters and what we can do in the future so you know i think that um we should all expect to see more of uh the westgate irregular players you know uh, player characters i mean well watch this space because um the now novella um that i'm writing with eric to tie off um Artemisia and Staha, like we wrote a whole thing. Um, that is like nearly done. Um, so I oh, just nice. have to make a little bit of a, a um, decision because um, I know that uh, some of our fans like continuity. And so um, the Skaha stuff will happen after the events of Fearful Symmetry. So there is a little bit of a danger of sort of not knowing where Artemisia will be at the end of Fearful Symmetry to then she would pick up with Skaha. Um, but I think I can kind of finesse it enough where um, since it's so close on her and Skaha um, and other people aren't in it um, as much, like I think that I can kind of just sort of fudge what's going on outside um, and uh, just like do that because i don't want to sit on it too for too long because i'm excited to share it with people it's cool it's really awesome yeah that's always like one of the troubles as a creator is like you create something and you're like always like oh i could polish a little more i should like tweak this and tweak that i could expand this scene oh what if i just like let this story keep going <laughs> you know what if it didn't <laughs> end it what if it just kept going <laughs> um and yeah you just gotta nip it in the bud and pick a time to actually just share it with people yeah well, I, I mean, I'm pretty used to, like, cutting off revisions on my own stuff, but the continuity thing, 
is is a, a weird thing for me like mm-hmm. figuring because you're never going to be i think in perfect continuity because like you have what you're playing and then you have what you're writing and it's never gonna like completely line up where you end one and then start the other one back up again so it'd be like 100 percent continuous so um i think i'll probably plus um in this case it's uh it's my first real co-writing experience and i feel like it's making a more polished thing because we are alternating pov sections because that's the easiest way Mm. Um, but we are sort of contributing or looking over the section before us so that sort of you write a section then somebody else like polishes a little as you go along um and i know i want to do one like continuity within it polished pass i assume eric will want it too um so then at the end it ends up being i think probably pretty like i'll still do a read aloud um computer program step to catch the typos but we should be pretty close to rolling out. I mean, that's awesome. You know, I tried that process that you were talking about, uh, you know, two writers co-writing something, each of us take a chapter, then we alternate to the other writer for the next chapter, you know, and, and so on mm-hmm. and so forth. Um, it We started off saying that, oh, this should be some sort of murder mystery. It quickly devolved to some sort of really weird, like passive aggressive, like slice of life where our two characters, like, like you know we we got dressed we went to go get coffee like whatever and talk about things and like each of us on our chapter just like thought about how the other character basically was like wrong or their choices like oh like you know judging their choice of coffee or something and um you know taking the mystery and the solution like a different direction so it did not really work out you know for us and i think you know what i learned was that we had very different styles of solving a mystery and that's, that's true. That's what we did not explore like before beforehand. So you didn't have a sort of overarching outline that you were working toward? No, we just pantsed it. Oh, we were just okay. like, oh, let's just do this. It was you know, it wasn't for anything. It was just like for fun. So we were just seeing what happened. Yeah. Well, so I've done like it's kind of almost just a two player play by post kind of game, like with somebody. Um, and it sort of meandered, uh, which was um, and the the one that I sort of maintained the longest, um, I was experimenting with something that like kind of worked, which is that um, they had the characters didn't share a language, and so um, we would each write our part and send it to the other person, but we would x out all the dialogue. Mm-hmm. So all the other person would know is sort of like whatever body language kind of details you wrote in there um so that that was fun like i don't know that it made a product that like but it was just you know something we're doing for fun between the two yeah yeah i love that sort of experimental or exploration you know type thing um especially if you're not gonna release it you could just do whatever it's just for fun so that's why we felt like we could like me and this other writer really good friends we felt like we could like talk shit about each other's like coffee tastes <laughs> like you know i write that my character uh ordered like a hazelnut espresso and then added some creamer and then when it was like her turn to write she was like what the fuck like creamer and hazelnut <laughs> disgusting why don't you just get like a frappuccino you know you like something something you know so i think it just turned into this thing where we we're just like um because we're good friends we just blame each other basically yeah we um eric and i had like um by the time i was done with it a scene by scene outline um er eric eric claims that i made the outline and he just agreed with me but um i was definitely trying to like bounce ideas off of him when we made it because we like talked it out and then i was the one just was the one who wrote it down um but when i wrote it down i did sort of like try to divide it scene by scene and we didn't 100% stick to it, but I'd say we stuck to it like 85, 90%, um, at least in the beginning. And then of course, like it sort of, it goes a little different towards the end, but so um, that sort of knowing kind of like, okay, this is where I'm trying to go in this scene. And this is where I want the character to sort of end the scene really easily jumps then into the next scene, so. Yeah, uh, and, you know, I'd love to continue this conversation. In fact, I'd love to pick your brain a little bit about like different <laughs> AU possibilities. Um, yeah. But 
Uh, right now we're at 625. And so we have to take a five minute break and run an ad and then start with the new episode seven of Fearful Cemetery. Enjoy it. All right, we'll see you uh, next time. Oh, we won't be here next week. We're running another rerun, unfortunately, just because of like travel schedules. It's just it's just tough. But in two weeks, we'll have another new episode for you at that point. Sorry to disappoint. And also enter the dice giveaway exclamation mark ticket. I'll put it in chat. Okay, bye. <laughs>